Looks like frogs are the new canaries in the coal mine when it comes to the impact of climate change. Experts are seeing evidence of mass extinctions, and some of that research is being done at our own Oakland University. Paula Tupman geared up and headed into the wild to follow new research into why hundreds of species of frogs are disappearing. Right now, at this very moment, we are experiencing a mass extinction event for amphibians. And this, this really matters when you talk about bringing the specter of climate change into microscopic view. This is what's happening right now at the Biological Sciences Department at Oakland University, measuring the metabolic rates of frogs while also measuring the velocity in which zoospores, or a fungus at its most infectious stage, can swim. This is the stage that, that wants to swim and find a, uh, an amphibian and burrow into its skin. Pretty complicated stuff that in plain English translates into trying to find out why hundreds of toads, frogs, and salamanders across the face of the planet are disappearing. This is considered by many to be the most damaging pandemic uh, ever recorded, at least in terms of the number of species being affected. Dr. Tom Raffel and his doctoral students Hunter Craig and Jay Nulker are essentially running two labs, the one on the third floor of Dodge Hall at OU and the other, the massive great outdoors, collecting amphibians from around the globe as well as local ponds. One of the biggest threats to amphibians right now is the, these fungal diseases, the, these uh, these chytrid fungi that are uh, being spread all have been spread all over the world by people. There's another species that was discovered in Europe. It hasn't gotten to North America yet, and if it were to get here, uh, it could be catastrophic. They are tracking a killer fungus that is killing amphibians. Now that looks like a green frog tadpole. And so this is where this becomes a climate change story, because while we are experiencing the hottest temperatures on planet Earth, this really has more to do with temperature fluctuation. Sometimes when we're sampling, we're, we're just going out and kind of randomly sweeping through to see what we get. What these scientists are trying to isolate is as simple as it is complex. Whether the drastic and dynamic temperature swings are somehow making the fungus better able to infect the frog, pond like this, you might you might get things like red spotted newts and green frogs. Or whether those same temperature fluctuations are somehow making the amphibians more susceptible to infection. Parasite ability versus host ability. We want to be able to use math to predict how infected frogs will get at, uh, in response to, to climate. And so they scour ponds and wetlands for specimens. Every critter they catch could be the key to figuring out what's killing them and then perhaps how to stop it or because of climate change, if there is even a way to stop it. And so for anyone who might think, oh, well, it's just a few frogs, it's not just a few frogs. It's a lot of frogs. It's a lot, a lot of frogs. And what these researchers are trying to head off is a day when a child looks at a picture and says, oh, what's that? And someone says, oh, that's a frog. We used to have those on planet Earth. Paula Tutman, Local 4. Fascinating. All right, Paula.